welcome to Afghanistan with Mohsen Jamal. Armed insurgents occupying an adjacent building were assaulting on the governor's office in the southern city of Kandahar on official state Saturday. Five people were injured in the attack on the governor's office. The unnamed official state gunfire and two explosions were also heard outside the city assaults were also being made against an intelligence office and a police compound outside the provincial capital, he said. Last week, the Taliban announced the start of their up a spring offensive against U.S.-led coalition troops and Afghan government. This comes as Al-Qaeda has confirmed the death of its leader Osama bin Laden and said in an online posting that it will continue to launch attacks on the West. The group said it would not deviate from the path of armed struggle and that bin Laden's blood is more precious to us and to every Muslim than to be wasted in vain. This statement was released on forums sympathetic to Al-Qaeda and translated by the site monitoring service on Friday. It was not clear what country the statement had been posted from. The message called upon Pakistan, where Bin Laden was discovered to rise up and revolt to cleanse this chain that, that has been attached to them and to clean their country from the filth of the Americans who spread corruption in it. It added that the group would soon release an audio tape of Bin Laden that was recorded one week before he was killed by U.S. commandos on Monday. Al-Qaeda's branch in Yemen confirmed the death of Bin Laden four years ago after speaking to their contacts in Pakistan. In a statement issued by email on Friday, the Taliban in Afghanistan said Bin Laden's death would give a new impetus to the fight against foreign invaders in the country. Meanwhile, United Nations human rights investigators called on the, on the United States on Friday to disclose the full facts surrounding the killing of Bin Laden, in particular whether there had been any plan to capture him. The U.S. President Barack Obama, basking in the United States public approval for the killing of Osama bin Laden, flew to a military base in Kentucky on Friday to thank special forces who carried out the daily raid and laid a rally felt with cheering troops. With the, his poll numbers up and even Republican critics congratulating him for the bin Laden operation, Obama paid tribute to the elite military team in a secrecy shrouded meeting at Fort Campbell five days after announcing the al -Qaeda the leader was dead. Commandos who conducted the assault on Bin Laden's compound in Pakistan gave o Obama first-hand accounts of what happened, and he awarded them the highest presidential honor a military unit can receive, a U.S. official said. Obama's visit just today after attending a somber wreath laying ceremony at the gro Ground Zero site of the September 11, 2001 attacks in New York came as questions grew about initial U.S. details of the airborne assault on Bin Laden's hideout. Soldiers gathered in a joint aircraft hangar festooned with American flags and a band belting out rock and roll tunes. A huge job well done banner hung from the wall. Obama's meeting with the Special Forces operatives was held privately to protect the secretive nature of their work. The U.S. Defense Secretary Robert Gates said the death of Osama bin Laden could be a game changer for the U.S. led war effort in Afghanistan. In his first public remarks since U.S. Navy commandos killed the Al Qaeda founder in his hideout in Pakistan on Monday, Gates said it was too soon to say for certain what the effect of the raid might be on the nine year old war in Afghanistan. Gates told service members at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base in North Carolina that the killing of bin Laden could aggravate of the tensions between the Taliban insurgency, which includes a spiritual leader, Mullah and Al-Qaeda. He read that it was too early to make a judgment in terms of the impact inside Afghanistan, but I think in six months or so we'll probably know if it has made a difference. Gertz spoke a day after holding a private meeting at an undisclosed location with the team of U.S. Navy SEALs who carried out the raid on Bin Laden's compound. No members of the U.S. assault team were killed or wounded in the operation. Syrian troops backed by tanks swept into Benia's a hub of anti-regime protests as residents formed human chance and a bid to hold the military operation, rights activists said. Electricity and communications were cut early on Saturday as the tanks entered along three axes heading towards the southern sector of the city on the Mediterranean coast. Protesters were resisting by forming human chains, and the activists said reached by telephone from Nicosia. Tanks also encircled the nearby town of Beida, while an army boat patrolled offshore, they added. The military sweep into Benias and northwestern Syria 
times two days after a convoy of 40 military vehicles pulled out of the southern town of Dara, another protest center which the military had locked down since April 25th. On Friday, up to 30 people were killed in what protesters called a day of defiance. Human rights groups say that more than 600 people have been killed and 8,000 jailed or gone missing and the crackdown on protesters since demonstrations erupted in mid-March. The United States warned Friday it would take additional steps against Syria if it continues its brutal crackdown on protesters a week after imposing tough sanctions on the Arab nation. Yemeni opposition leaders have dismissed the country's president's stance on a revised Gulf-backed plan to ease him out of power as massive demonstrations keep up pressure on Ali Abdullah Saleh to resign. The rejection on Friday came at the after Saleh refused to sign the deal until rep representatives of both the ruling party and the opposition signed it, postponing the signing ceremony indefinitely. Sultan Atwani, an opposition leader, told reporters his bloc would not accept the plan proposed by the Gulf Cooperation Council that if his envisages Saleh is stepping down in 30 days in the hope that would end three months of political crisis. There were also large and permanent protests in Taz, Yemen's second city. But Saleh hit back, telling a mass rally of supporters after Friday prayers that he would resist calls to quit, describing as outlaws the tens of thousands of protesters gathered a few kilometers away. Ahmad Khalifa al Kabi, a media official for Gulf Cooperation Council, the six Gulf Arab nations sponsoring the agreement said their foreign ministers would meet in the Saudi capital Riyadh on Sunday to try to find a way to salvage a deal. A passenger plane carrying 25 people has crashed in Indonesia's eastern province of West Papua. The crash killed 15 people, a police official said. Bambang Ervan, a transportation ministry spokesperson on Saturday, said that uh, um, an MA-60 aircraft crashed into the sea some 500 meters away from the airstrip before its intended landing. Police Lieutenant Colonel Antonius Wanti Julian To said 15 bodies have been found. Ervan said there were 21 passengers and 4 crew on board. He said the plan belonging to a state-owned company went down en route from the town of Sorong to Kaimana in the same province. The vast Indonesian arch Pelo Plego re relies heavily on air transport and has one of Asia's worst air safety records. And that voters in the United Kingdom have overwhelmingly rejected a proposed reform to the voting system in an embarrassing blow to the country's Liberal Democrats. Results released on Saturday showed nearly 68% of voters had spurned the new system championed by Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg, leader of the Liberal Democrats. British voters cast their votes two days earlier for an area of polls, including a referendum on election voting reform, local council elections and elections to the Scottish Parliament and the Welsh and Northern Ireland assemblies, but the results indicated a stinging defeat for the Liberal Democrats and an apparent punishment for their role in a deficit cutting coalition government. The campaign for Thursday's, Thursday's referendum on voting reform strained the year old ruling coalition, prompting angry exchanges between Liberal Democrats who backed change and conservative defenders of the current system. And that's all for now. Thanks for staying with us.